<laughs> What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits and inside today's video we're going behind the edit with Ange McCabe. Now if you've never heard of Ange McCabe, she is a Canon ambassador. She's based in Victoria, BC, Canada and she's an incredible photographer. She is also a really amazing human being. So inside this video, she's going to show you exactly how she shoots the photos that she does in camera. So we're talking about gear, we're talking about lighting, posing, how she's kind of working with couples to get them comfortable, all that stuff. And then we're heading into Lightroom, she's going to show you step by step how she actually edits the photos that you see on her Instagram. So I'm really excited to give you the chance to watch this because I learned so much having this conversation with Ange and I'm sure you're going to get a ton out of it too. Let's head into that intro and get into it. Ange, welcome to the show. How's it going? <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Could you run me through really quickly what's in your camera bag right now? Like you're, you've got to shoot, you forgot about it, you have to leave. Like what are you packing? The two, three lenses, the Perfect. body, whatever. So I have my R5 and a Mark IV. Uh, sometimes I'll bring a third body, but not to a normal session. For a wedding, for sure, I'll bring three cameras. Um, my 85 1.2 and my 35 1.4. Um, sometimes I'll also bring my 50 1.2, but I'm more so a 35 and 80. An 85 kind of gal. Um, I use a hold fast moneymaker strap. I've used that thing for such a long time. Um, this one time I forgot to bring one of the clips to connect my camera for a wedding and I had to carry my camera around and I was like, what oh, is man, this nonsense? <laughs> it's so weird when you have yeah. to like put your camera down all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, I could not live without that. Um, I actually use a Vinta backpack that has been, they're now, they're non-existent, this company, but I really like it. So for those of you, you cannot find them online, but they're, but they're good. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it. So I shoot, you know, outside of weddings, I'm 100% all natural, uh, light photographer. And um, yeah, often for like a normal couple session, I like to plan if it's a nice sunny day, I like to plan about one hour to one and a half hours before sunset time. I also really like to know uh, the location that we're shooting and if we get a true sunset time or not, because that obviously affects, mm -hmm. you know, when you lose your light. Um, I find that most of my favorite photos happen, you know, five to 10 minutes right before that sun yeah. hits the horizon. Of course. And then also like right after. Uh, the mm. first like, well, depends. Sometimes, you know, in the middle of summer, middle of June, uh, you, your sky is quite bright for a very long time. And you get yeah. those really nice colors. <laughs> right after is like 1 a.m. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes, right? Um, so, yeah, it uh, that's kind of like the time I like to shoot. Um, yeah, I live in a very, uh, very beautiful place. So there's lots of really, really nice locations to shoot here. And I feel very lucky for that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk modifiers because you've said mostly you're 35 and 85. That's your go-to. Yeah. Um, but then are you using like diffusers? Are you using reflectors when you use natural light or is it just all natural? None of that. No, I'm just like, <laughs> None of that so nonsense. simple. No time for that. Sometimes I'm like, am I copping out here and not like giving you a good answer? I don't, uh, if I use a reflector, honestly, it's to produce fake wind. Fake which is wind. a great thing to carry around. Yeah. Who's doing the so winding, I have this, like, little. Yeah, yeah, you win. You go, you know, it adds emotion to the hair and makes movement yeah. and everything like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's been a couple times where I've used a reflector, uh, but often I'm just using the natural light and moving my clients to where, you know, I'm really um, aware of where that light is falling on their faces. And I mm -hmm. think because I do have a good background as well in like studio lighting and um, in portraits, like yeah, shooting portraits and stuff. stuff. So I really pay attention to light and shadows. Um, so I'm very, yeah, very particular with what, like how I pose my clients in the direction that the light's coming from. Yeah. And are you like a go-to, this is backlight and side light. Those are the two that you do or? Uh, for the most part, like obviously on wedding days, there's, you're going to be shooting in high sun. You're going to be shooting as the ball. You're going to essentially be playing, playing the ball as it lies. Right. So, yeah. uh, but for a more controlled uh, scenario, like a, like a normal session. Um, yes, I'm mostly backlit. Usually it's once that sun goes down. Um, I do like some harsh light sometimes, um, but more often than not, once that sun goes down over the horizon is when I flip uh, positions and I have that nice um, kind of like, well, it's the blue hour, but you get that still really nice golden skin tones uh, when the light is now facing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. And then any filters on your lenses or just like lens as it is? No, we just bare back. <laughs> Just bear okay, back. I'm gonna be honest though. I do not treat my gear very well, so don't do what Ange does. <laughs> uh, lens caps. Who uses lens caps? There is oh, a, a no place in that. heaven or hell that has all of the lens caps. Um, so oh, I geez. always have my hoods on uh, mm -hmm. for two reasons. I shoot into the sun often, so I'm using 
you know, that for its purpose, but then also so that I don't bang it into things and scratch the actual glass itself. So, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, um, sometimes I'll shoot through things like like pantyhose just a little bit. <laughs> okay. So you can actually just put it right around your lens hood. Uh, it kind of gives like that hazy effect, which is a little bit trendy right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can do stuff like that in post too, but it's nice to um, actually capture things. Can you see that there? You just oh, it. okay. So not the whole thing. And just then you on literally a just stretch. You can stretch it right across or you can just have it like blurring some of the... Uh, some of the spots and below. do you have a go-to brand so. or you just grab some from your closet or? oh no these are just from the dollar store these are just yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was in my car before my shoot and i'm like oh i need new pantyhose and i'm literally <laughs> tearing them with my teeth in the car <laughs> um other things that i shoot through though are um uh, i have a tie chiffon often like a fabric around mm-hmm. my lens as well or i have long hair and i can like hang it in front of my lens and it also kind of gives a cool effect too so Okay, so all the guys who are watching that, right? this need to like bring yeah. a wig to your photo shoots. Exactly. Or they have to release their man buns. <laughs> yeah, there uh, you go. Right? You let it flow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's what's in your camera bag. I love that it's it's really simple. Like it's really achievable for yeah. most people. It's, it's like, hey, I need a 35 and 85. We're good. Exactly. Lots of backup batteries, obviously. Too many cards that I'm never stuck, you know? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and always make sure I, my kind of routine is after every shoot, my batteries go right into my chargers so that I'm always working with uh, full batteries. Um, also, a little side note, if you live in a place that's cold or it's winter when you're shooting, your batteries drain a lot faster uh, in cold weather. So making sure that you have extra batteries and being prepped for cold shoots is very important. It. Love it. Okay, um, you're hopping on a plane. You can only bring one camera, one lens. What do you choose? Okay, so I'm hopping on a plane and I'm only allowed to bring one camera and one lens. I would bring my Canon R5 and a 35. Yeah, hands down. That's, that's my combo. Why are you on Canon? Why? It's just what you happen to shoot with or like why do you shoot Canon? That's the question. Okay, so I used to shoot Nikon and I'm not throwing any shade on Nikon, okay? And I was waiting, waiting, waiting for them to come out with... Um, with something that was comparable to Canon's 5D Mark II. Mm -hmm. And they weren't. And they kept on having rumors and there was no comparables. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to get a Canon 5D Mark II, which for a little side note, I did actually shoot on it uh, a few months ago. I pulled out my Mark II because I like, I want to check and see like just how far technology has come. Um, (laughs) Other than it being quite a bit slower to focus, it was still good. My photos were still, you would not even know the difference to be 100% honest so sometimes like you know what I'm talking about investing in good gear um it truly is the glass I would say um because you can still pump out really good photos from from an old camera one thing that I do really love is um I just love how they how Canon feels in my hand I know that's kind of like an Mm. abstract thing but it just feels good it's like an extension of my hand um and then also I really love the skin tones I love, love, love the skin tones. And that's one thing that a lot of people talk about when switching to Canon or when they're like trying to compare the brands and get people's advice. For the most part, everyone says that Canon skin tones. So I feel like we may sway you, Ryan. <laughs> well, I, I, you're, I'm a skin, with Scott. you're a skin guy. That's what Scott you said. You're a skin he's, guy. he's been telling, telling me too. It's like, you need to switch. So we'll see we'll see i know that when i edit canon photos i will agree like the skin tones it's it's much easier to get what you want yeah totally so and i can also when you said like it's the way it feels in your hand i was like it's so true like canon bodies there's something about like the ergonomic curvature within my fingers it does feel better yeah totally so, you're onto something in your opinion what's the most okay. important part of creating photos in your style If someone wanted to shoot exactly like me, I guess the advice that I would give would be find that really golden, beautiful light and really, really focus on emotion and body language is a huge thing. Um, If you can draw somebody in by the connection in the photo and then you have an epic background behind them, then you just like, then it's a really good photo, right? Um, Mm -hmm. If you can take a really good photo with a completely blank background and really draw people in Uh, to the emotion of the image with like literally like white seamless paper right if you can really nail that emotion and then put it into a really cool scene uh, that's when you're going to have a really really um a a photo that's going to draw people and it's going to make them feel something and remember your photos Hmm. okay are you ready to get into doing some editing together i have never been more ready in my life (laughs) (laughs) as long as we're ready to go (laughs) yeah 
<laughs> okay, perfect. So let's head over into Lightroom. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. This is a raw image. I haven't done anything to it yet. So for this lovely couple, um, I obviously wanted to make sure they were comfortable. So when I ever, whenever I have my clients lying on the ground, I always like to make sure that they're feeling comfortable because if you don't have their head supported, they're going to like start getting weird posture. Uh, one thing that you'll notice through most of my work is shoulders. Shoulders and necks and hair <laughs> are all really, really important. Uh, and hands as well uh, when evoking emotion in my work. So whenever I'm lying couples down, kind of what I'm looking for compositionally is um, I want to make sure that we have a nice light coming about 45 degrees down and across their face. Um, obviously, we had to kind of prioritize one person um, in this specific photo, uh, but the light is coming down uh, soft light. This is uh, at an in-home session and we have diffused light through um, just a sheer curtain and it's coming down and across here so that we do have nice highlights um, on their faces, on their shoulders, hands, all that kind of stuff. Also, when I'm lying my couples down, often I'm looking for this like diagonal line to compose my shot. So they're always kind of going from like one corner to another. Um, so yeah, that's about it as far as like the making of this photo. Um, yeah. We should, we can get into editing here if we'd like. Sure, I'd love it. Um, so uh, one me, quick question. One quick question. So yeah, what's that? basically, <laughs> do you just find a window and be like, hey, let's lay down near the window? Or like, what was the light exactly. source? Exactly. Yep. So it was just a okay. soft diffused window light. Um, often when I'm doing at home sessions, I'll, I'll also throw in a white sheet and clamps into my bag uh, just in case I have really harsh light, which is fine, like if you want to rock it. But uh, also just knowing how you can modify your natural light to give like softer skin tones and um just really kind of modify your light and have control over and the sheet it. So, like literally just a queen size bed sheet literally like yeah just make sure it's not stained because you want to like <laughs> no. go get the grungiest but yeah, just like sheet a white you can sheet find from the thrift store yeah okay exactly yeah check it for stains and then you're good <laughs> okay awesome. um so yeah awesome. so this room actually happened to already have sheer curtains so it was good um i also brought um some extra layering pieces just to go underneath like a neutral blanket some pillows Here's a sheepskin rug. Uh, just to add interest, like when you looked at this photo, you might not have even noticed it, but now you're mm -hmm. looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. But if it was just like a hardwood floor with pillows on the floor, like it would look kind of janky and mm -hmm. you would probably notice it at that point. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping that you're drawn into the photo because of the emotion and then everything else is just, you know, an element that adds interest. So, um, okay. So for me, uh, my editing is actually a really simple process. Obviously, we spend so much time on our computers editing. So whenever I make uh, presets or online content, usually it's because I'm actually using it and I have a need for it. So everything that I uh, produce for others to purchase, it's um, it's come in handy. It saved me time. So I hope that it does the same for everyone else. So I came actually came up with a preset that I actually use for every single one of my images that you would see on my feed in the past two years. And I haven't made new presets since because they just work. You know, it's like I want to come yeah. up with new presets because it'd be fresh. But I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm so loyal to my evoke presets that like. <laughs> yeah. And just you for know, people who it's are hard watching to... this, Anch has like some yeah. incredible presets and they're part of part of your workflow. So that's the reason that we're yeah. using the presets today is not to be like, hey, we're going to show you how to edit. But not really. It's like this is how yeah. she actually edits. So that's why. This is actually how I actually edit. I'm not just trying to sling my stuff on you guys here. <laughs> uh, but I just have my presets just work and they work well for me and a lot of other people. Um, so it's just simple. It's a base preset. And then I have. Um, toolkit presets below. Uh, right off the bat, this is not a one click. If you see me hover over, we'll edit it. Don't worry. Uh, but then I have toolkit presets that kind of um, alter that one base preset and changes a bit of the tones or the colors or whatever it happens to be that it's doing. Um, my kind of process is I do all my Lightroom editing. I don't do any of my skin retouching for the most part in Lightroom, except for maybe using some brushes to brighten up highlights or shadows or anything like that. Um, but all of my skin retouching for the most part I do in Photoshop, any of the detail stuff I do in Photoshop. Okay. And so like, even yeah. if you're doing a thousand wedding, you know, like a yep. thousand wedding images, that's a thousand the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So I'll go through wow. and I'll edit all of those thousand photos. I'm not going to, I'm not going to open up every single one of those photos into Photoshop. Let's just, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm like, no, no, no I don't do that. Um, but I mean, if there's like one photo where there's a little something over here, I might spot heal in Lightroom, but that's about it. Um, okay. I do my cropping in Lightroom, Lightroom as well. But sometimes I don't want to, because Lightroom is a little bit limited when you are cropping. Sometimes there's something in the photo that if I straighten it, it gets cropped out. So mm -hmm. I will do that t type of cropping in Photoshop and use the content aware function, which yeah. I hope hopefully we'll have time to show you guys Save in case you haven't used it before. Yeah. So um, any other questions about my process or anything before I start editing? 
I think, you know what? We're going to find it as you go through it. As um, we go? You cover it. Yeah, let's launch in. Sounds good. Oh, you know what? Okay, perfect. I, what, one, one question. What is the number Sounds one good. mistake based on like all the people that you're training, working with, the number one editing mistake you see most people making when they're trying to edit photos the way you do? I think uh, uh, often when people are struggling to edit, they are fighting something that's naturally existing. So um, obviously making sure you're nailing, pretty much nailing, Getting good skin tone straight out of camera is important, but often, especially for wedding photographers, they're like, oh, I'm struggling with the skin tones at this reception. There was candle lights and there was cafe lights and everything was like orange and yellow. And I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. take a step back for a sec. You're never going to get the most perfect creamy skin tones because if you used your eyeballs to look at the people in real mm -hmm. life, they would have orange skin. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying to, you know, have completely orange photos, <laughs> but just stop fighting what is actually just in front of your camera, right? So, yeah, um, and cool. then another thing is sometimes we're so niche down with our style, which is totally cool if that's your jam. I'm not telling you what to do, but often I think that people, they see other people's work and they see people's presets and they're like, oh, I love that. Oh, I love all the beige and brown and like all this stuff. But then they live in the Pacific Northwest and there's green mm -hmm. trees and ferns and everything's green. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. but I can't get that look. Well, of course you can't. So, um, you know, I mean, you obviously can still tweak those greens, but I think it's good to pick uh, a style or a preset that allows you to still have that element of realness to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun to play sometimes, and it's fun to create something completely out of our imagination using just, you know, split toning in itself, you know, turning yeah. a field of green grass to beige. Like that could be really awesome, but it's not it's not realistic. It's not what's in real life. Um, so finding an editing workflow that works for you, finding presets that work for your surroundings, your environments, the tones that, you know, good skin tones. Obviously, we talked about having skin tones as priority, uh, but just something that truly works for you. So you can actually have, a, you know, a relatively efficient um, editing system, right? I think mm -hmm. sometimes we spend so much time tweaking and, and whatnot that we, our editing process is just far too long yeah. and it makes us burnt out. So, so good. That's why I made presets for myself that they just work and they're relatively, you know, well, they are really easy for me anyways uh, to edit and to get the look I want with like minimal time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Let's dive in. All right. Let's get into it. Okay. So I'm going to apply my evoke base preset. Obviously right off the bat here, everything is far too orange. Uh, we're just going to bring down our temperature right off the bat. That's too much. Sometimes if I'm having a hard time uh, wondering if like, is this too warm? I'll push it really far and then bring it down or I'll bring it down to the cool side and then bring it up from there. So uh, for me, I would say that's probably good. I'm gonna bump up my shadows here and maybe add just a little bit of tint here to the magenta side, just a touch. And I'm gonna bring down my whites and my highlights just a little bit. And then I am going to go over here <clears throat> to my brushes. My presets also come with a, uh, a brush set which I use often. So I'm going to go down here to lighten up. I'm just going to make my brush bigger. I'm sure you guys know, but if you don't, you can use your bracket keys and your keyboard to lighten up. There we go. And I'm actually just going to cool that down just a tiny little bit. Hmm. Her face in the shadows, we're getting just a little bit warm. Um, we haven't even played with exposure, but so for with these presets, it's nice because you can edit like quite a bit lighter and softer if you like that kind of a look. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. like that light and airy, or we can like make it, you know, super moody. We can go like this. We can add uh, some vignetting and then maybe mm -hmm. like, <laughs> maybe we can add like a radial filter here just to kind of bring in the, uh, our eyes to that part of the photo, you know? And it's mm -hmm. funny because my eye is always different. So I pr could probably edit this photo. 10 different ways and uh, you know, over the span of 10 different days. <laughs> uh, so there is our before and after with a slightly moodier edit for that one. Um, okay, so next photo. I know this is gonna be a very long YouTube <laughs> video for you. I mean, at so this rate, that was a very, things. very fast edit. So I don't think so, I think we're yeah. good. Okay, okay, it. perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so this one's taken with my 85 millimeter lens. Um, one thing when I'm shooting into the sun is often you will notice in my work that I'm not actually capturing the sun itself. Um, a few really important tips for, sh for backlighting for me to get the look that I get in my photos is making sure that I'm shooting high. So often I'll bring a ladder or like in the place that I'm shooting here in this photo, I was standing on some rocks um, and I'm looking to have 
dark background behind my clients so that when that sun comes, when I'm getting that sun leak into the camera, that I'm still getting like that rim light all the way around them for the most part. And that kind of gives you that like that depth in the photo that you're looking for. And then also uh, you get some really nice color gradients going up through uh, your sun leaks. So um, with this, I use my 85 uh, millimeter 1.2. Um, and uh, as far as settings goes, like my priority is highlights. So uh, I'm looking at skin tones. I'm looking at essentially like the, the highlights in the photo as well. I turn my highlight alerts on. Um, I'm very visual. I'm not a super techie photographer at all. So when people, some people like really love asking so many techie questions and I'm like, <laughs> I have a very simple answer for you. It's I, I turn my, um, my highlight alerts on so that I can very quickly get a visual on my LCD screen um, of what parts are being blown out. And if uh, just to you know for for those who might not know what blowing out means it's like when you when your exposure is so high on certain parts of your photo that there's virtually no data so even if you're shooting in raw format um you can never obtain information because there's no data there to be obtained so i always have my highlight alerts on sometimes i will have parts that are blown out like in the sky or something but i always like to make sure it's I'm okay with it. If there's really pretty clouds in the sky or like just interest in the sky, then I might actually underexpose more than I normally would. Um, overall, I'd say I probably underexpose, uh, but then overexpose for sure. But sometimes I'll underexpose even more if I'm trying to get like the detail in the clouds or the color in the sky, especially mm -hmm. after that sun goes down and you get the really pretty like cotton candy sky. Um, so for this particular photo, uh, the sun is about up here. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see my mouse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'm just... It's just leaking down into the camera. So I'm moving my camera down a lot. Um, if I am trying to focus uh, into the sun, sometimes our cameras have a little bit of a hard time focusing, just like we do. We look into the sun and our eyes squint, right? So what I do is I actually, I'll try to, hopefully you can see this, okay. Don't look at my dirty lens. <laughs> Don't judge, okay? Uh, but I'll actually put my hand in front of the lens. Mm -hmm. I will use back button focusing and I lock my focus and then I take my hand away and shoot. And that's how I make sure that I get spot on uh, in focus photos when I'm shooting directly into the sun. It also, it's kind of like a fast process for me. Uh, you know, it's just like second nature to put my hand there. Um, yeah. But that way and, I'm taking back, less back photos. And focusing, not to like totally yeah. whatever, but just to no. like define that term. That's basically yeah. what. So you're essentially setting up one of the keys on, you can, you, you have the ability to customize all of your keys no matter what camera you have. Um, or sorry, buttons, not keys. And you just set it so that you can use uh, your shutter or your thumb or whatever finger you're using on that mm. button to lock focus. So once you get your focus, you hold it and then you're able to recompose. It's called focus and recompose. Um, but often I'll just like, you know, I'll put my hand in front of the camera and then I'll focus with my shutter or with my thumb because I have them both assigned to, to focus. And then I'll hold my thumb on that button that I have assigned and then let it go and now i know that it's not going to start tracking and moving and trying to focus again and then yep. i take the shot Perfect. and i double check zoom in on those photos that's one one pro tip <laughs> before you move on and you move and you're like yeah i nailed the shot uh double check zoom in take the three seconds it takes to touch your screen and zoom in to make sure that you actually are in focus <laughs> i can so all right because <laughs> there's nothing worse than like being so stoked and then you're like well crap yeah when you pull yeah. them up onto your computer right Okay, so, so onwards. Okay, so often with photos like this, uh, especially with 85 millimeter lenses, some people don't really love the 85 because they're like, my photos, they're always so hazy. And I'm like, no, 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 you got to lean into it and you got to know how to edit them. Uh, here's where your favorite, my favorite tool comes in handy and that's dehaze. Dehaze is amazing. I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about it in a second here and edit this photo. I'm going to go and apply evoke base preset as well as my natural vignette. So the... The base preset actually removes any natural vignetting occurring in your lens. Uh, and so the natural vignette adds that back in, plus just a little bit extra. Uh, if it's too much vignetting, you can always go down to um, uh, post crop vignetting here and just double click. You can double click any one of your sliders and it brings you back to zero. So just in case you didn't know that little shortcut. Um, and then I'm going to go over here to the basic editing panel. Often I don't need to go beyond the basic editing panel unless there's something a very specific color tone or like a type of flower that i'm trying to make sure is spot on or like bridesmaid dresses is a big one mm. uh suits navy suits always want to make sure that those blues are accurate to real life which is really important for our wedding clients i think um and then here i'm going to go to dehaze and we're just going to crank the crap out of dehaze <laughs> we can push this one 
and we're going see how that photo went from hazy to like mm -hmm. re a lot of d depth and dimension there maybe increase my exposure contrast a little bit uh maybe just pump my highlights up just a little bit more so that stands just a bit more and that's that's about it um there's the before and after it was a very very easy edit love it all right i'm loving these Shall presets honestly <laughs> yeah go per they're good right <laughs> Okay, so I'm kind of known for my sparkler exits. The past like three years, I don't think there's been a single wedding or elopement where we haven't had sparklers involved. No I don't way. care if they're going out of style. Sparkler Do you just exits. bring them? I bring them. I always have packs of sparklers. You supply the sparklers. Oh, I supply the sparkler. <laughs> but but uh, often my clients want it and they will supply their own, but I always yeah. have extras in case. Because oh, sometimes even okay. though I tell them like, get the, the long ones, get the, the really ones, long yeah. ones. Sometimes they show up with a little tiny yeah, ones. I'm like, I got store. you. Here's some long ones. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That is um, so good. That's such a good hack because honestly, <laughs> there's so many photographers who are like, why do I never get weddings with sparkler exits? I never thought about, oh, what yeah. if you just brought your own sparklers? <laughs> yeah, you just bring your own sparklers and a couple of barbecue lighters, right? Just don't leave them in your car. That's yeah. a, a big thing just for okay. safety, you know? Uh, a few other things though about sparkler exits. Uh, make sure that your venue is okay with it. Make sure there's no fire bans um, and just make sure you have a good grasp on... I could spend a whole hour probably talking about sparkler exits, so we'll keep it keep it okay. minimal. Uh, but just question. make sure you, yeah. Do you light them all at once, or do you light them one at a time? How do you light them? No, you. So what I do is often I'll have um, about twenty people. Twenty is a good number of people to manage at a sparkler exit. I had a big Italian wedding, two hundred people once. They brought two hundred sparklers. That was an event. I would not recommend. <laughs> Learn oh, from me. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, I always say about 20 people. Sometimes they'll have more, but the more there is, it's actually just way more disorganized and hard mm -hmm. to um, for people to listen and pay attention, right? Especially at yeah. the end of the night. Sometimes people aren't their sober <laughs> selves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes, right? Sometimes. Um, so what I like to do is set people up in like kind of like two rows, you know, like at sporting events with like spirit fingers, <laughs> kind of like that, but with sparklers. <laughs> Obviously, mm -hmm. I run through all of the safety stuff first, and then I start the couple at the end, uh, like farthest away from me, and I will um, I will get the people that are closest to them to start lighting first, and they actually light faster off of each other mm -hmm. than with a lighter. So once you get a couple going, just bud them up together, just touch tips, and <laughs> they get going, okay? There you go. That's the lesson today, um, touch tips. Touch touch tips and thing, sparks fly, okay? Uh, that's how it <laughs> Um, now for settings for my sparkler exits, for the most part, I, I start with the same settings and you never know, uh, really what you need to change your settings to until they're lit. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you have to be pretty confident in your starting settings and, um, know what to change right away. Right. Mm -hmm. If you need to make any adjustments. Um, obviously this photo is really warm straight out of camera. I'm going to show you what we can do with it after. Um, and then I get the couple to come down. And I get them to hold sparklers as well so that we get light on their face versus just all of the light coming from down and below. Mm -hmm. um, I also have some sparkler overlays that we will, while we're on this photo, maybe I'll just do that. Um, that just really enhances these photos. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to apply my evoke base preset. Obviously, this is not one click. Okay, don't judge. And I'm just going to turn that temperature like all the way down. Look at that. <laughs> Increase my exposure. A little bit of dehaze here. And I might actually back off on tint and just bring it the green tones a bit. So when you're dealing with, with skin tones and you're finding that it, they're quite red, if you just turn your tint down a little bit, obviously this will um, affect your whole photo, but you can always go in with a brush and just turn the tint down a little bit to the green. So if you know your color wheel, um, red and green are complementary colors. Uh, so they're opposite. So uh, so you can just use green to counteract the redness and it's and it right. helps. Um, I am going to increase the warmth just a little bit on this though, because um, sparkler exits are warm. So we want it to feel, I want my clients to look at this photo and feel uh, the way it did in real life, right? Uh, now, one thing that we do get often with sparkler exits is green, and then we also have fringing. So let's deal with the fringing first. And that's like the little red lines that go around your sparklers. I'm gonna go down here to uh, lens corrections. Now, if you're, your uh, Lightroom might be set to profile, so you just need to toggle over to manual in order to fix that. And you're going to take the purple hue and you're going to just slide this little slider all the way to the right. So that captures all of your red tones and purple tones. And then we're going to increase our defringing to about three. Uh, once I find that if you go a little bit more than that, that's when you start getting white or gray lines around anything that is red. 
So your your client's skin tones have, you know, undertones of red often. So uh, you'll start to get gray lines. So I think, so usually that's about good for me. We'll actually maybe go down to two. A little bit of fringing is okay, but if you like to print your photos and you like to blow your photos up, um, things like a purple, bright purple line around white things uh, definitely stand out on a print and your clients might be like, oh, what is this, right? So just, especially if you're printing your photos, make sure that you're paying attention to those little details. Um, so now let's go here to, we're going to fix this green. Um, there we go, detail. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in here. We're going to zoom in to about 100%. So I'm not going to take credit for this technique. This is from Damien Simmons. He is a Photoshop guru. So mm -hmm. if you're in his photography group on, uh, or his education group on Facebook, he has a lot of really good ed education in there for Photoshop. Um, he's very techy, very, very technical. Okay, so what you're going to do, let's zoom in even more just for the sake of this recording so you can see. We've got quite a bit of grain there. That's okay. So what we're going to do is increase in this particular order. Go down here to noise reduction. We're going to increase luminance to 100. Don't worry, we're not going to keep it there. Uh, sorry, let me zoom in again. So right now they look like an oil painting and we obviously <laughs> don't want that. <laughs> well, you guys don't like that? <laughs> and then we're going to take our color slider. We're going to bring it down to zero. So here we can see all of those little pixel color blocks. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase our color till those pixel blocks are completely gone. So I would say about there. So I'll just double check. Uh, it's pretty good. And then, sorry, keep on going in and out. My finger keeps slipping. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. They still look like they're, you know, an oil painting. So we're going to bring down our luminance until we're happy with the amount of grain that's there. Obviously, some grain is fine. And it's also like a vibe, right? We like, we like a good grain. Uh, but this way, it just gives you better quality of grain. Uh, so that's what I do for all of my darker, more grainy photos. And um, yeah, try it out on your next really dark photo, Ryan. Have you tried this before? <laughs> this technique? Uh, that specific, taking it all the way up? No. Yeah. No, I yeah, love it. Give it a shot. No, it. It's amazing. It, like You can recover some really, really, some photos you thought were like tossaways. It's a really good technique. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to export this photo while we're on this one. I'm just going to... I'm just going to export it and then open it up in Photoshop. Uh, actually, we can also right click and go um, edit in Photoshop. I don't really like to use this method. I find that it's a little bit clunky and takes mm. um, takes more rendering power on your computer. Computers don't like it. <laughs> okay, so here is our photo. Um, I'm going to open up my... I have sparkler overlays that I use all the time. Uh, mm. They come in a pack like this. And I'm just going to pick a overlay that's going to work best. And where did you get them from? So, they're myself. I created them myself. So they're actual sparklers that I have captured. Um, because every time I add an overlay, I want it to look real. I don't want it mm -hmm. to be fake, right? So these are real um, These are real sparklers that I captured. You can get these on my website. Uh, the discount, discount code that we're going to give you guys also works for my overlays and any of my other digi digital content that I have available as well. Um, so I overlay, I just drop it onto the photo and then I put it at a lower opacity just to make sure that it's not covering up anything that I want. Um, and that looks good to me. We're just going to increase it now to 100%. And then I just click my, my pre or sorry, my overlays come with the, um, Photoshop action and I just run it on it and it adds it on, but now I need it to match the tone of my photos. So let me just zoom mm. in here. Uh, so I'm going to double click my hue saturation um, layer here. And I'm going to increase my saturation to 100% just to see the color tone. And then I will dial it back to match my photo. We're kind of in like the orangey, orangey kind of tones. Let's see. Something like, like that would probably be good. <laughs> I'm being indecisive. And then we bring back down the saturation. Um, yeah. And that's that's pretty good right there. So there is the overlay uh, in action. It just kind of brings you into the photo a bit more. Um, often when I'm also, um, often when I am actually capturing sparkler, uh, sparklers in the flesh, in real life, my sparkler exits, <laughs> I also will go up to my, one of the guests and just like kind of gently grab their hand and, and move their hand in front of my camera mm -hmm. to get the, uh, the sparklers to be, you know, add a little more bokeh them. into my photo. Yeah. So there we have it very quickly show you the before and afters here of this sparkler 
uh, the sparkler shot. Here's the raw, here's with evoke presets and then with the overlays. Looking back now, uh, the, the skin tones might be a little bit too red down here for me so I could go in with a brush, but for the sake of moving on, let's go on to the next photo yeah. here. Um, all right, so you may actually recognize uh, this lovely lady. Uh, this is Nicole Ashley. She's another Canon ambassador, um, very talented photographer. Uh, I always love photographing other photographers. It's like such an honor and I love maternity photos. I'm obsessed. So um, yeah, so this is definitely a special night. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and apply my base preset, maybe some natural vignetting. You know what? We're going to hold off on that for now. We'll uh, check it out in a minute. going to increase my exposure a little bit. And increase my shadows just a touch. Uh, a little bit of dehaze. And I might actually back off just a little bit on the tint and bring it back down just a little bit. So we're kind of, I don't know if I even did anything there. <laughs> Sometimes I like bring it back to the same number and I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't do anything, but it's like, I do that all the time. Yeah. All now the it's time. perfect. Uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to bump down my highlights uh, and I'm going, I'm kind of looking at her shoulder here. So obviously changing anything on here is going to be like a global change to the photo. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to bump up the shadows on their faces um, and the highlights on their faces. So with a brush. So I'm just going to go ahead and move my highlights down so that we still have like skin texture here on her shoulder. And it's not just like super bright. It kind of stands out a bit too. Um, if you'll also notice here, um, I'm, you know, we exposed her shoulder. Shoulders are a huge, huge thing that I always try to um, use to evoke more emotion in my photos. You can see their hands down here. If sometimes people feel weird, uh, with their hands they don't know what to do do with their hands so if you're photographing women or people with longer hair uh, just get them to play with their their hair and it adds emotion and makes them feel less awkward and it looks good so there you go yeah and i'd love to ask about the shoulders a little bit more yeah. like when you say evoke emotion and whatever like, yeah so like what does that look i wish like? i had a photo like side by side so i could show you but if if she was just relaxed and her arm was down here uh it wouldn't show as much emotion as if she had her shoulder up because here she's kind of like oh like like, you know, she's, <laughs> sorry, I'm like giving like sound effects, uh, but it just kind of so shows good. like vulnerability, yeah. right? I love uh, collarbones. I love shoulders. I love um, when my clients like allow their partner into their space. So there's, I wish I had examples to show you if we're going to get into it. This one, maybe this photo that we're going to be editing shortly shows a little bit more. Let me zoom out. So if you kind of look here, see how she's like leaning the opposite way to him kissing her neck. She's like opening up for him. And that's like, mm -hmm. when I look at that photo, I feel vulnerable. I feel like. You know, if someone, if you touch your own neck, it kind of gives you like the, the chills a little bit, right? So when people look at that photo, they're like, oh, like they feel it a little bit more, right? Um, so here she's being really vulnerable. Here she's being more like flirty, cute, like shrugged shoulders, like, oh, like don't kiss me. And here she's like, have your freaking way with me, right? <laughs> so shoulders, it. It, you know, I'm kind of beating around the bush here. Shoulders are important. They, uh, I, I focus a lot yeah, on them. No, that's massive. <laughs> Um, and and while we're talking about the image itself, like, are you shooting from? I am. I'm on a rock here. Actually, quite a few of these photos are taken at the same spot. This is the same uh, the same mountain as well, right here. Um, mm -hmm. You can see once again in this photo. Sorry, my computer is a little bit slow. Uh, that I have you know darkness behind them, so I'm shooting high enough that their heads aren't in the sky. We are a little bit crooked here, but mm -hmm. this is a good example of a photo that I wouldn't crop in photo in Lightroom because if I go like this. Now I'm yeah, getting the sun, like, right? sure, we're straightening our horizon, but now we're cropping right at the tip of their finger. And I don't like to crop right at the edge of something. So we're not going to do that. Uh, I would Got do it. that in Photoshop if I wanted to. Um, OK, so I'm going to go ahead, bump my shadows up just a little bit. I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to use my lighten up brush, which is already set to it. And just do like that might be a little too bright. We're going to back off on that just a little bit. And we're going to do John's face here as well. And I'm actually going to go down here, do their hands too. Pretty sloppy with my brushes. <laughs> I'm not overly precise most, most of the time, uh, but it works. <laughs> so there we go. And then another thing that I do use often, if you want to see your overlays, you can just uh, press that. Um, often for skin tones, if I find them pulling a little bit red, especially in the shadows, I have created a brush that I use often. And it's called Shadow Fix and Desaturate, which is down here. There we go. So it brightens up the shadows. It gets rid of the redness and it just kind of counteracts the redness that can sometimes happen. Uh, so that it made him a little bit too bright, though, because we already added the lighten up brush. Uh, but there the skin tones on his face are really good. Now I can even take this brush and 
let's just zoom in here. Uh, and we can even go a little bit here, just in her hair and her shadow there. It was a little bit red, maybe mm. there in her neck. And just kind of gets rid of that. I don't want to make her cheek uh, get rid of too much redness because she has blush on. Um, let's see here. I can show you the before and after. See how it just kind of brightened them up? And yeah, just really focus on, on them skin tones, Ryan. You're a skin guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving okay. it. Okay, another thing that I would do to this photo too is let's just enhance that, uh, that warmth of the sun a little bit more. So I'm going to use a gradient layer. I'm going to go golden glow. And I'm just going to go like this. And I can actually bring it right down mm -hmm. onto them a little bit. And if I wanted to play with it even more, I could actually bring down exposure a bit just so that we're getting still really good tones under here. Maybe even pump the, the tint a little bit uh, to the magenta side just to bring out some more richness. And uh, yeah, there would be a pretty finished photo. Um, I mean, there's more things I could do, but for the sake of this, that's about what I would do. All right, let's move along here. People love this set that I did, her red hair. Um, people just love her red hair. Uh, this is a really fun shoot. This one is not natural light, actually. So I lied. Sometimes I use mm. um, artificial lighting. This is actually a video light because I was recording video. That's another avenue that I also dabble in. I don't want to say dabble. I actually do a lot of it. I really love uh the element of video especially in today's day and age with mm -hmm. instagram reels and tiktok and all that stuff that we're being forced to do so we might as well lean into it and do it well so um, i've really taken a passion for yeah. videography um so beating around the bush here this is actually a video light that i'm using because i was doing video um this is a godox gl 160 or something like that because <laughs> i'm super techie you know <laughs> Uh, so it's just yeah, a, just yeah. a video light uh, <laughs> that I put a gel on top, which is like a colored, um, like a colored transparent paper, um, like a plasticky paper film, what's it called? It's like a gel. It's a little gel. Okay. So, so how did you, it's, it's a, a film, film gel. gel. Yeah. How did you decide what to get since you're not oh, a person? Oh, I literally, like, I'm like. <laughs> to the photo guy, what should I get? <laughs> you probably wouldn't want to see the inside of this softbox. I actually just bought um, <laughs> different degrees of orange transparent paper on Amazon. I don't even think it was for this. Uh, I could have probably just bought an actual like Godox gel, <laughs> but Amazon was quicker. Mm -hmm. um, time, but... And uh, just yeah. uh, you literally tape them. You have to make sure that you're doing it safely because lights can get very hot. Um, I just taped it to the inside of the um, the softbox, <laughs> literally with scotch mm -hmm. tape that came away with from the, the light. light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could. And then why the Godox light? Is, yeah, in front of the Godox light, just to make it a bit warm because LED lights, video lights are often, unless you can change the temperature of them, are very, very cool. And I like skin mm. tones like you, Ryan. So I like to make sure that my straight out of camera photos, I'm vibing and I'm feeling. Um, obviously, if we shoot raw, we can change it. But I just like that warm tone, especially for video. Mm -hmm. With video, it's a lot harder to edit really good skin tones if you're not dealing with good footage straight out of bat, so straight true. out of camera. So yeah. um, all right, so here we go. And I'm, I'm guessing just looking at it, like you've got blue falling off. Oh, the yeah, there is natural light coming natural in the back. Light. Yeah, we're going to do, I'm going to do a, um, a gradient layer to fix that blue. I see, you you got a good eye. <laughs> you're like, I see what you're doing, Ange. This is a okay. big, um, like 86 you. inch uh, PLM, which is called a parabolic, parabolic lighting modifier for those uh, portrait photographers out there. So it's just a huge uh, umbrella softbox, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and apply Evoke. Now we know that her red hair is going to probably probably be a little bit um, a little bit intense with this. I'm going to add my natural vignette. I'm going to bump up my shadows. Going to cool it down just a little bit. Uh, this right here, I would open up into Photoshop and get rid of for sure. Uh, that's an easy fix. Mm. We won't have to do that today though. I'm going to decrease my exposure just a little bit. So essentially, I just play around with shadows, highlights contrast, dehaze, uh, it's pretty much just like the basics that I do. Like I said, I rarely have to go beyond the basic editing panel um, to mm -hmm. achieve the look that I want. Uh, for this one, I might actually go down to the HSL sliders down here and just increase the blue a little bit on her jeans. Uh, but it's also going to make this bluer down here. So we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Hue, we can also play around with with the blues. So um, just trying to focus in here on her jeans and not this. It's throwing my eye off. <laughs> Uh, I just want them to be like a nice blue jean color, which would be, that would be good for me. But if you didn't want that blue at all, you could obviously uh, bring this right down to just like 
they, they would just look kind of gray. But I like the contrast with the red and the blue. I think that it's it looks nice. So we're gonna do that. And then what else would we do here? I'm gonna go to my linear gradient and I'm going to use, I'm just gonna start, uh, what do we have here, golden glow? Yeah, we'll use golden glow. Whoops, sorry folks. <laughs> there we go. Okay, um, so I'm just dragging that over and then I'm going to counteract the blue with a little bit more of the warmth and maybe just bring down saturation a bit just so that it's not super intense. That's pretty good. I'm not going to uh, fight that too much. We could always, I think that's pretty good. Good, mm -hmm. it's good for now. <laughs> uh, and then I would fix that and then probably, uh, I'm not gonna use a, a custom brush for this. I'm just gonna go from scratch in case you guys uh, don't use custom brush sets. Oopsies. Sorry. Hold your space bar to, when you're zoomed in, to move your screen if you guys didn't know that. Um, her hands, whoopsies. Her hands are a little bit red and same with her feet. So I'm going to make a custom, just my own brush here. I'm not gonna use anything. You can double click effect and it will uh, reset all of your settings. So I'm just going to uh, brush this on to the parts that are a little bit kind of on the, the red side. And then I'm just gonna bring my tint down and saturation. There we go. So that's how I kind of counteract skin tones that are a little bit um, Maybe I can zoom in here so you can see it's how I counteract skin tones that I, are a little bit problematic. You see there? Mm. You, know what, you know what? You know what I love about this is I'm watching it. I'm like, this is so subtle. Like, I don't know if it's just the yeah. screen capture and it's more obvious for you, but I feel like it's not. It's just the I, fact that your eye is looking for these little things. And I feel like, I feel like that's the big difference between like an amazing edit and a not yeah, amazing edit. The is little like things. People who notice. Yeah. The so it's, I'm sure that yeah. the screen capture is capturing exactly what I see here. It is subtle. Um, but just overall, like I, I, I'm a skin tone girl, you know, so, uh, it does, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it does make a difference overall when people start really looking at your work, you know? So there is the before and after of that. Uh, obviously we'd fix a few things in Photoshop, but, uh, yeah, that's about it. On to the next. This one is a really fun edit for me. Uh, it's very easy as well. So we're going to go ahead and apply base preset and vignetting. I'm going to increase exposure. And here's where the magic happens. So this photo looks kind of like muted. It's like subtle. You're like, why? Like this is, you know, right off the bat, if you didn't know what to do with it, you'd be like, this preset is crap. <laughs> uh, but honestly, all you need to do is start increasing the temperature and watch these like tones come out, right? Move the tint a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you get those good tones. Let's increase dehaze. Watch this. Dehaze is like magic. Look at that. You know, their skin tones are, are a little bit warm there, so I would counteract that a little bit. But overall, um, I'm just looking at the overall feeling of the photo, and I, I want it to be quite warm. Uh, yeah, that's probably pretty good like that. Yep, and then I'll go in here with a linear gradient, and I'm going to add a golden glow. That's just going to really bring up that warmth even more. going to add a little bit more tint just to bring out those kind of darker tones like the richer magenta tones. There we go. Uh, I mean, I could go in there and fix up skin tones a little bit, but for the most part, that was it. <laughs> Super, Super easy. easy, right? Okay, this one I wanted to yeah. bring up because it's also a good example of doing those um, darker photos with the grain. So it's showing you how, um, sorry, I'm all over the place here. You can see how it is really grainy. Sorry, my, it keeps on, Keeps on zooming out. <laughs> and so what time of night were you shooting to get it that black? So in this the back? was uh, after the sun went down, probably about an hour after the sun went down. Um, yeah, I'd say about an hour. Uh, when did we shoot this? Yeah, it was probably about an hour after sun went down. because this was actually a family maternity session and her kids were getting squirrely. So, <laughs> um, okay. Let me just fit screen. There we go. Okay, so you can see my settings here. Um, I usually don't like to shoot below 1 250th of a second. If I'm being very still and intentional, I will, I will shoot at 1.2 if I'm still wanting to get a in-focus photo. Because obviously there's intentional blurry photos that you, you know, do shutter drags and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a photo where I'm intentionally trying to get a in-focus photo, uh, I don't like to go below, uh, definitely below 1 200th. I move so much. I move so much when I shoot. 
So um, this is <laughs> it's just yeah. not safe. So this is, 200 is safe if I'm very still. Okay. Um, you can see I bumped it. Yeah. And are you um, intentionally? taking your exposure up above like the wide open all the time um so this i normally shoot sense. between sometimes i'll shoot at right down to 1.2 with my like 85 but often not usually around like 1.4 2.0 2.2 is kind of like the place that i'm most comfortable at uh or that i normally shoot at if i'm shooting a family and there's more multiple people okay. depending if i'm what i'm trying to tell what story i'm trying to tell i'll still shoot like wide open you know, 1.4 with my 35 millimeter lens, if I'm up close and I'm focusing on one kid in the family session, right? Um, you can also shoot wide open totally. with a group if you're far enough back. And if you want everyone to be in focus, you can still shoot wide open as long as you're far enough back because that focal point, uh, that distance, that focal distance gets um, a lot wider, right? The farther back you are. So, uh, but for the most part, I shoot mm -hmm. between like 1.2 to 2.2. Um, so here we are, ISO yep. 3200. Um, this is on, this is on my Mark uh, Four. Um, I like to stick with multiples of. I don't know what the rule is. Multiples of eight, thirty-two hundred, sixteen hundred, eight hundred, four hundred, uh, hundred and sixty. Those actually have higher quality grain. Like I said, I'm not techie, so I don't actually know why. But you get worse grain before and after those ISO stops. So there's some mm. on your cameras. You can actually set it so that it, you can only toggle between the good ISO stops. 3200 is kind of a sweet spot for me for dark photos for my sparkler X. This is what I usually start at 3200. Um, and then I'll adjust my other settings from there on. If I need a bit more light, I'll probably bring my F stop down a little bit and just make sure I'm not shooting below the, especially for a sparkler exit. I usually won't go below one 250th because I move so much. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's uh, add evoke base preset. I'm going to increase exposure here. I still want it to be really moody. I'm um, going to increase temperature go pretty hard on this now the light on her belly is going to be quite hot because of the actual candlelight that's in this lantern so we'll go and counteract that after just don't let it throw off your eye uh, i'm going to warm it up quite a bit i'm going to bring up my tint as well and then let's just bring this down bring up my whites uh that's not oops sorry about that <laughs> blinded you guys for a quick second uh increase my highlights and what else so that trick that I showed you earlier with the grain, fixing the grain with luminance and saturation, I actually made a, um, a toolkit preset for that called low light noise reduction, uh, just because I'm all about skipping steps. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm all about skipping steps and, and streamlining my workflow. I don't know why I keep zooming in. Sorry about that. Or zooming out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just click the low light noise reduction. Obviously you can go in and tweak it more if you want, but I'm actually happy with that. Um, let's go and use a brush and I'm going to, we're just going to use a brush and I'm going to go lighten up to my custom lighten up brush. Oh, and just brush it onto her face there and onto her shoulder a little bit and maybe her thigh. So when you're, whenever you're brushing on highlights and shadows, um, it's only going to look natural if you're actually enhancing a highlight or um, darkening a shadow. Um, you can obviously lift your shadows a little bit, but it, photos start to look weird and look off. Sometimes you play with the photo so much and you're like, what is going on? Why is this looking off? And it's often because we're trying to uh, fudge reality is what we're trying to do. So, um, so whenever I'm looking at like, where is this light falling? So it is brightest on her belly. So that's fine. I'm not gonna try to make the highlights on her tummy match her face because that's unrealistic, right? But I do want her face to be a little bit brighter just so that, um, so that we can still see her face, right? So I'm going to just bring up exposure just a tiny bit and bring up the highlights just a little bit there too. And maybe add some warmth just to kind of um, not necessarily match her tummy, but just kind of bump it up a bit, add a little bit of magenta. There we go. Now zooming in. Sorry, I, I hope that this translates okay um, for the viewers as a screen recording because uh, I am a kind of a detail girl. So I'm going to go to my... I'm going to use another brush and use uh, Shadow Fix and Desaturate, which is right there. And I'm just going to brush on those parts that are really uh, red. So even here a little bit on her dress and her hands. And that's fine. I can leave it a little bit red, but I just want it to be less vibrant, if you know what I mean. There we go. And then I'm just going to counteract it. So I already have the Shadow Fix and Desaturate. Uh, applied to it but I'm going to just decrease tint a little bit so I'm going to go drastic just so you can see that red 
totally goes away if I when I crush it all the way to the, the green side. Um, so I'm just going to back off on that a bit and uh, maybe bring down saturation. Actually, no, that's fine. Control Z or Control Z, depending on where you are in the world, you might say Z differently. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I would do to fix those shadows. Uh, other than that, other than that, um, that's about it for before and after on that one. So we're just, so this is raw. You can see that I, it's quite warm straight out of camera. One thing that I have yet to mention, which is shocking, is my white balance settings on my camera. So mm. I've said this many times already in this interview. Um, I am not a techie person. So often the reasons why I do things are merely because I think it looks better. <laughs> So obviously when we shoot raw, we can change our settings. We can change our temperature and our tint um, in post. But for me, when I'm at a session, my vibe matters so much to how I shoot, to how my couple feels, to just the overall happiness and how I feel about the, se the session itself. So yeah. for me, I like to capture my images as close to what I want, like temperature wise in camera. Um, I know some people use like um, those ex expo discs and all that stuff, white cards and stuff to really perfect their white balance. But I'm such a simple creature sometimes when it comes to things. Like I said, I'm not techie. Yeah. So I actually, nine times out of 10, I shoot in shade or cloudy mode. That's it. And okay. so when I look down okay. at my camera, it's warm. I edit warm, so I want my photos to look warm. If straight at a camera, this photo looked like like this, which might be more accurate if I use like a, oh, like a white card, right? Like, so let's just say like, I don't know, mm -hmm. I'm just watching this, but like, let's just say that's what it looked like in the back of my camera. I would not be vibing it the same. And I wouldn't be like, holy crap. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear in here. We're not going to swear. We're going to, we're going to keep it reined in today, but I would literally <laughs> probably swear. I would probably swear um, at my clients and be like, holy crap, but in more, you know, elaborate terms and be like, look at the back of my camera. You guys are so hot. <laughs> So, um, and that makes such a, huge, it makes difference. A huge difference. So it's, it's simple. It's basic. Uh, obviously if I'm shooting a wedding, um, you know, there's lots of different lighting throughout the day. So when I'm shooting in really warm, uh, warm environments, like reception spaces at nighttime with candle lights, obviously then I'll change my settings to something else, Kelvin and make it, you know, custom, um, or just shoot in tungsten mode. Um, but yeah, that's about it. As far as white balance goes, let's go ahead and apply evoke. Um, there we go. It's going to be red right off the bat. I knew that. I'm going to decrease my temperature, increase my exposure. So this one, I want it kind of like mid ground between moody and light. Um, I still want you to be drawn in, but we have a lot of brightness in the photo. So I don't want it to be, I still want to see the candles, but I still, yeah, I want a, a happy place between, uh, dark and moody and bright and airy. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to bring that temperature down a little bit more right now. I'm looking at their skin tones making sure I'm happy with those. That's pretty good. They both have kind of um, really olive darker uh, skin tones to begin with. I'm um, gonna add a brush and go lighten up. And just brush on there. There we go. And then I find over here to be a little bit too bright for me. So I'm just going to go and make a linear brush. So it actually is just default set to lighten up there. So we're just going to double click it and I'm just going to bring down exposure. There we go. Got those tones back. Beautiful. So that's about it for this photo. There is the before and after. Okay. Sorry, we got lots of photos here. <laughs> okay. So right off the bat here, we are um, for this particular photo, the sun was still up. The sun hadn't gone down yet, but I hid them. Be I hid the sun behind the couple so that we could still retain all of the detail in the clouds and in, in their faces and in like the texture in her dress. Um, often I will, I like to shoot directly into the sun, but I also like to hide it behind things. So behind my client's heads um, or trees or just kind of filter it through something just to be able to retain a little bit more detail. Um, there we go. So just going to straighten it out right off the, the get go. For here, you can see it's a little bit more underexposed um, because I wanted to retain the detail here in the clouds. Um, so we're going to go ahead and apply a base preset. We're going to warm it up. Now this sky was actually quite like cotton candy with pinks and purples in it. So once we get the photo pretty much how we want it, minus the sky, I would say that's pretty good. Let's bump up our highlights, dehaze, and shadows. 
Uh, that's that's pretty good. I'm gonna go here. Um, one of the newer updates uh, in the past few months from Lightroom is their subject select and their select. Their sorry, their select subject and their select sky masking tools are really really cool. So right now I've just selected um, the sky select here, and it's just determining what is sky. I'm gonna make sure we can see that overlay. There we go. So it did a pretty good job, except. We need to add a little bit in here between their faces. We also see there's some defringing and some grain that we can also deal with here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and add this overlay. So just to back out here, we're not doing a pink overlay. This is just the uh, red overlay showing. <laughs> just make sure you guys are following along. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead to add brush and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. There we go. And just kind of like brush it on uh, in parts that it missed that's good even going onto their face a little bit is better than leaving like a white halo uh that should be good i think there was one more spot I did kind of brush onto her leg and stuff but i think that's okay uh and even like here this is where like the sky would be so we'll kind of we'll see we'll see what if we need to make any changes after um okay so now i'm going to decrease exposure see those nice like dimension coming i'm gonna add some magenta just making sure I'm not getting that like weird um, kind of like fringing that happens if you add too much. See how you get those like banding, I guess is what that's called. We don't want any banding on the color. That should be good. Warm it up a little bit too. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe if I add some vignetting. Oh, I already did that. We already added. Nope. There we go. Um, I would be pretty happy with this photo. Maybe now that the sky is done, I could warm it up even a little bit more. Do our low light noise reduction as well. You run out zoomed in so you can't see it. Uh, but that's about it. A little before and after there. That one. Okay. Let's work with some yummy warmer skin tones here. This is a very fun edit. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and apply uh, evoke base preset. You can see here, this is after the sun went down. So I have turned um, and had the sun facing them, or like the, the lit up sky is now facing them. So that's where we get really nice skin tones there. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my temperature. And I'm okay to make it a little bit warmer because the sun at this point was still really glowy and warm. So I'm okay to push that a bit. The only things that we're having a little bit of an issue are here is the skin tones on his face and his ear, uh, but those are easily fixable. So I'm gonna leave that nice and moody, maybe add some vignette really bring your eye into the middle of the screen. Go to my brush tool, go to shadow fix and desaturate. Kind of brush it onto his ear there. And it's still a little bit red, so I'm just gonna actually bring down my tint a little bit to the green side. This is a nitpicky thing. I don't know if it's gonna translate on a screen recording, <laughs> but it, I think it, things like this make a big difference. There we go. Um, whoops. I would probably fix this little hair there on uh, in Photoshop and maybe warm up her face a bit here. But um, but yeah, there is our, here's our before and after. There we go. Okay, one more. I just shot this a few days ago and I thought we could end on a puppy photo because everybody loves puppies. <laughs> loves puppies. But also um, often people struggle with yellows. They like to desaturate their greens and they like to desaturate their yellows. So as much as I wanted to show you this cute photo, um, I actually wanted to share with you um, how we can edit greens and yellows as well as get rid of this creepy sunflower smiley face there in the background. <laughs> That's the thing about sunflower fields is people always pick out the seeds and make creepy faces <laughs> that you have to Photoshop <laughs> out afterwards. Okay. That's hilarious. So we're going to go ahead and apply uh, evoke base preset. It's a little bit red for me. So we're going to decrease temperature. We can see that the greens are still green, but they're not quite as vibrant as we want. So uh, let's just increase this. We want it kind of like, once again, kind of like a mid ground between um, bright and then kind of moody. So I'm just increasing tint to bring out their skin tones. I'm looking at their skin tones right now. Uh, a little bit of dehaze just to intensify everything just a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to go down here to my uh, HSL sliders. And when you're dealing with greens and you want to make your greens better or more intense, often you actually just have to play with yellow. There's a lot of, um, you know, yellow in uh, that makes green, you know, blue and yellow make green. <laughs> so if we actually increase our green, I'm just going to 
go you know very drastic here so you can see if you really want to lean into the green it actually in this particular photo doesn't really affect their skin tones too much so if you really want to lean you could totally do it um, but I'm gonna kind of go I still want it to be green but not too intense uh, we also have sunflowers and I want those to remain yellow so I would probably be happy with about that and we could also increase our green so we increase yellow uh, we could also bump up our greens just a bit and uh, I would be good with that I'm gonna add some vignetting just to you know make it a little bit more moody but overall uh i would that, would that photo would be done for me there is a before and after easy it's easy peasy right <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> awesome and that was absolutely incredible first off thank you so much for sharing your process kind of what goes into creating these images and actually showing us the edits like that was mind-boggling few things that i took out of that was the fact that it's all about the details like obviously you've got you've got the fundamentals of getting it right in camera and getting your white balance right and doing things creatively and setting up the pose like but it's all these little things that stack one on another on another and so i just love actually seeing behind it so thank you very much for sharing that oh, first you're so off. welcome <laughs> and, and that's one thing we, i love about this industry yeah. though is like no matter where you are in your journey like there's always room for growth um i always obviously teach a lot and i'm still constantly learning so much even when i'm like live in my education group and i'm teaching them people will be like oh you know you can do this shortcut or like hey you could try this i'm like what so it's amazing yeah. i think you know it's important to stay humble also but continue continually um grow and better yourself and take a you know the only person you should compare yourself to is your last photos that you took right mm. so yeah. always try to push yourself and uh never stop learning <laughs> that's so good so good okay so i guess to, to wind it all up like where can people find more from you if they're interested in, in learning more from Ange mccabe Sounds good. Um, so I, uh, I'm very active on my Instagram. That is the social media outlet that I often post my new work. Um, but I do have an education group on Facebook. That's the place that I hang out a lot in and go live in. Um, that is called Stay Inspired with Ange McCabe. You can just search for it in Facebook and just answer a couple questions and I'm happy to have you there. Um, right now I'm going live, if you're watching this in September 2022, um, I'm going live every single weekday. Um, I have a calendar up there where I'm talking about all different topics. So. Yeah, oh, I love connecting awesome. with uh, with other photographers in there too. So I'd okay. love to have you guys in there. <laughs> Perfect. And if people want to pick up the presets, the workflows that you've got, they can get it at your website. And we're going to leave a link in the description, right, with a, with a little discount. Good. Yeah, it's okay. just MyrtleMoss.com. And you guys can get 10% off, an additional 10% off all of my digital content from my presets, workshops, all that kind of fun stuff. My sparkler overlays that you saw today, uh, those are all in there. Um, and everything else is pretty much on sale right now too. So you get like the sale price plus the additional 10% off. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Any final words for the people? Stay inspired, my friends. Always stay inspired. <laughs> All right. So I hope that interview was as encouraging and inspiring for you as it was for me. I know it was amazing to see that Ange is only using a couple of lenses. She's only got, yes, she has a couple cameras, but she's only really using one camera at a time. So if you have a couple lenses and a camera and a good eye and you go out and you practice, you can create work like this. There's no rocket science involved. Yes, it does take time. You do have to go out and practice. You do need to get those real emotions and get your couples connecting on camera. You do need to learn your camera settings and get great light. But all those things, they're basic, they're achievable. And so you can take that and combine it with some really, honestly, pretty basic editing. Once you get those grassroots done and you've got your photo right in camera and you head into Lightroom, yes, presets can be amazing to get the right tones, to get things sped up, to help your workflow. But at the end of the day, like none of this is overwhelming, unachievable for you. So I hope you're encouraged. I would love to hear what the most helpful or inspiring part of this interview was. Please leave it in the comments below. Let's have a conversation. And if you have any questions for Ange, leave them in the comments as well. And we'll try and get her to answer those too, okay? So I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, go shoot, practice, create something awesome, and stay classy. <laughs> see you later. Hi, I'm Ange McKay. Welcome to Signature Edits. Hey, I'm Ange McKay. Sorry. Hi, I'm... You know when it's like the simplest things and you're like, hey, it's Ange McCabe. Wait, with signature edit? That was, I like you know the vibe, though. You get in the flow and yeah. in your head you're like, then you run out I'm going to screw this up. I'm going to share with you my process from start to finish in the Lightroom as well as I'm going to share... Okay. This is so bad, let's back Ryan. up. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my creative process as well as editing some of my... <laughs> Are you going to make a bloopers reel?